Facing fertility challenges can be emotionally overwhelming, but PGT brings a ray of hope. By identifying the genetic makeup of these embryos, we can select healthy embryos, which reduces the risk of implantation failures, miscarriages, or even genetic conditions, either such diseases which run in the family, or even conditions such as Down syndrome, and ultimately give rise to a healthy pregnancy. There are different kinds of PGT testing available, and the nomenclature can get confusing. So hello, I'm Dr. Jewel Banker, and today we'll be covering this very aspect. We'll start with understanding the fundamentals, like what are chromosomes and genes. Then we'll move on to what is PGT, what are the different types of PGT available, whom are those tests for, and how is the procedure done. So let's get started. So to understand PGT, let's start with the fundamentals. Our body is made up of tiny structures called cells, and each cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. So in total, there are 46 chromosomes. These chromosomes carry our genetic information, like our genes, which are responsible for our traits and characteristics. So think of these chromosomes as small packages, which carry important information for our body. So genes are tiny bits of information which are present on these chromosomes. In humans, there are about 20 to 25,000 of such genes, and each gene has a specific function. These genes carry instructions for building and maintaining our body. And the combination of these genes is responsible for all physical characteristics, traits, as well as functions, as well as susceptibility to certain diseases. So we get these chromosomes and genes from our parents, half from the mother and half from the father. And the combination of these thousands of genes determines the uniqueness of that individual. So chromosomes are the containers and genes are like the instructions present in them. Now that we have a good understanding of the chromosomes and genes, let us understand what PGT is. PGT stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing. It is a test which is performed during the IVF process, in which the eggs are extracted, embryos are formed using partner's gametes, and the PGT test is performed on these embryos before they are transferred back into the uterus. The purpose of PGT is to examine the genetic makeup of these embryos and select those embryos which have the highest chance of giving rise to a healthy pregnancy. Now there are different types of PGT available, each serving a specific purpose. The main ones include PGT-A, PGT-M and PGT-SR. Let's start with PGT-A. PGT-A stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Enuploides. This test focuses on the number of chromosomes present in the embryo. Enuploidy refers to that embryo in which the chromosomal number is not normal, that is, it can be less or it can be more. So embryos with an abnormal number of chromosomes can give rise to implantation failures, miscarriages, or even some chromosomal problems in the child, such as Down syndrome. PGTA helps identify those embryos which have a normal number of chromosomes and increase the chance of a successful pregnancy. This test is specifically useful for couples whom the age is high, that is more than 35 years. As the age increases, the DNA breakdown in the egg starts to increase, and this can give rise to more abnormal embryos. This test is also recommended for people who face recurrent IVF failures or recurrent early abortions. The next test is called PGTM. It stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Monogenic Disease. Now, there are certain single gene diseases which run in the family, which has a risk of passing on to the child. PGTM helps us identify those unaffected embryos, which can give rise to a healthy pregnancy and ultimately healthy generations. The third test is called PGTSR, which stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Structural Rearrangements. PGTSR is done when either one or both parents are carriers of a structural rearrangement in their chromosomes, that is either an inversion or a transplantation. In an inversion, a part of the chromosome breaks off, flips and then reinserts itself to the same chromosome. While in a translocation, a part of the chromosome breaks off and is implanted to some other chromosome. In parents or couples who have a balanced translocation, as the total genetic material is the same, they have no or few side effects. But we know that when an embryo is formed, half of the chromosomes come from the mother and half from the father. 
and there is a high chance that this embryo will have an abnormal rearrangement of chromosomes. Now this can lead to implantation failures, miscarriages or increased chance of having a genetically abnormal child. By PGTSR, we can select those embryos who have a balanced chromosomal arrangement and these embryos can give rise to a successful pregnancy. So broadly, there are three types of PGT testing available and a combination of these can also be used if needed. The basic necessity or prerequisite of this test is good grade embryos. So IVF is done by stimulating the ovaries to produce multiple eggs. These eggs are extracted, fertilized using partner sperms and good grade, preferably blastocyst stage embryos are formed. Now a blastocyst embryo has an outer layer which is called a trophectoderm layer from which the placenta develops and an inner layer called an inner cell mass from which the baby or the embryo develops. A small 6 to 8 cell biopsy is taken from the outer or the trophectoderm layer of this blastocyst embryo using special equipment and is done by an embryologist. The embryo is frozen or preserved at the IVF center and the biopsy material is sent for testing. The genetic material is extracted from this biopsy and analysis is done and once we have the report, the healthy embryos are then transferred back into the uterus. So in conclusion, PGT or pre-implantation genetic testing has revolutionized assisted reproductive technology. By analyzing the genetic makeup, that is the chromosomes and the genes of the embryo, we can select good healthy embryos which have the highest potential of implantation and a good chance of having a healthy pregnancy. We can reduce the risk of implantation failures, recurrent miscarriages or risks of certain genetic conditions in which the parents are carriers of.